before we go on the Shepherd, I'll talk about like Gen 2 in general. Hmm. Like um, I currently have the GNOME 49 PR request up. It is been pushed not too long or not pushed, sorry, but it's up now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll link it maybe later. But um, it's so what we're going to do for it is we're actually going to mask. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the term masking, but like masking a youth flag. Mm-hmm. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that if the user is using OpenRC, we are just going to prevent GNOME session from installing because okay. I still need to work out some issues with it. Like, for example, I prefer to not have the hacks in. You know, I want to get uh, the OpenRC stuff out first. Then I want to, you know, add um, auto start support. But for the now, what we're going to do is we're going to have the system D users will be happy. Um, and I'll create a separate pull request with like the GDM and the GNOME session patches. Uh, one of the bastards I didn't mention here was Pam. I'm going to say it from the bottom of my heart. Fuck Pam. <laughs> I hate Pam. It's awful. No one likes Pam. The no one should be forced to use Pam. modules, in case anyone's caring what it stands for. Yeah, it's pretty much done for login. Like, when you log in, Pam will do a bunch of stuff. It's how user services even work. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember when I asked Adrian about Pam, he actually said no comment. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't blame him because Pam is awful. But um, it does the job. Um, like, I had to patch, like, one file. That's it. Um, so, oh, yeah, Shepard. Mm-hmm. So... Shepard was actually, it looks like the people that did it first, but it looks like their approach is a bit older. Um, They don't actually have any C files, so I'm not sure how they do it. Maybe they have a patch upstream. Uh, For anyone who doesn't know what uh, GUIX is and stuff, it's basically, imagine NixOS. That's actually not very helpful. Imagine just literally any Linux distro, but you use like scheme list or scheme list, lisp uh, for like, Everything. It's mm-hmm. reproducible. I'm not even going to lie. I think that for the Renit system, Shepard, which is their basically their OpenRC, their system D, um, it's pretty neat that it's scriptable with, mm-hmm. you know, Sheen Lisp, or specifically GNU Guile, which is like a Sheen Lisp implementation. Remember how you it's said about program, saying but... words that sound fake? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just need a... You'll need a GNU... Uh, Pop dog, you'll need GNU uh, auto start, <laughs> and you'll need a uh, most importantly knob goblin exactly, to actually exactly. use GNU geeks. Very important. But yeah, it's um an interesting distro, and they're the ones that I actually use the reference for a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I can't read Scheme. Um, thank you Emacs for everything and nothing. But um, it's mostly fine. It's Looks like they have the sessions hard coded. This is something I worked upstream not to do, um, because there's also stuff. For example, the GNOME like initial login screen, mm. which I'm not even sure how to set that up yet. <laughs> I haven't gotten there, but uh, it's kind of low priority because that stuff's mainly for like Fedora and mm. Ubuntu. They you know that little like login screen, like "Hey, welcome to Fedora." Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's basically. That's actually started, I believe, by GDM, and it just passes a flag. It starts GNOME shell with, like, one window. It's a neat little approach, but I haven't got... I I technically support it, but I don't even know what it's called. Technically, to use it, you have to pass a... uh, I believe it or not, a kernel, uh, like, option. This is actually something software does sometimes, Mm -hmm. but after Fedora installs, it will reboot, and it will set a kernel option, like... Uh, Gnome like auto start uh, or not auto start Gnome like edit lo- login and that will start it. <laughs> it checks for that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But um, one way to do it. Uh, hundreds of ways to start a login screen, I guess. Exactly, but you know. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um. So they yeah, they got it done first. I don't see their C files. Um. But they did have screenshots somewhere showing it off. Um, yeah, I'm not familiar with any other distros um, that have done it. Um, but as far as I know, I'm the only person that has done the most complete, you know, implementation of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm curious to see what you know the GNU Shepherd people do as well in the future, mm-hmm. and more importantly, what Artex will do. 
Um, well, Artix uh, is God bless their... nothing. <laughs> That's yeah. what Artix is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, God bless their souls. <laughs> well, it sounds like the main thing with the Artix case is the guy who is maintaining the package, like, doesn't really use Gnome anyway, and there's not really that many people that use Gnome on Artix, so... Like, yeah, I, I understand. It is... It's just like a low priority for them. Like, I get it. Yeah, I I still don't like their mentality of sure, it. Sure, yeah. But, you know, these are Arctic users, and they're a different breed of special. So you're, you're kind of going to get whatever you get from them. And I can't blame them for just not wanting to deal with it, because they have, like, 800 init systems they got to worry about. And like I said, if I ever feel like it's what I might do in the future is I might set up a nice, like, I want to say a clone of their old approach, which is like where you basically just watch the services yourself, um, which basically will mean they only have to start one service and they don't have to sit and port all hundreds of them to each init system. Mm -hmm. And that'll make it easier for like, I know um, Devuin is a pretty big audience, honestly. Um, Maybe not as big as Arctic's, but they're a little more professional with it, I should say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm, I know they'll benefit from that too. Like it's not just Arctic, so it might be worth the effort someday. Mm-hmm. 